if you want to work with the web, for example, if you want to make a, a calendar app that shows every day a new cat image, you need to get your cats from somewhere and maybe have a look at the cat API. One of the tasks that you have to take care of is dealing with the response of your of the server. This is usually returned as a JSON file, the file format of the internet. And in order to use the information from the JSON format in your Swift app, we need to decode JSON, transform or map the data into our own custom Swift types. And I'm going to talk in this short tutorial about decoding JSON and deciding how to set up your custom structs, Swift models. This is the second part of a series. If you have never worked with a REST API, you should definitely watch that because I'm going over some of the basics of where you can get the data, what is an endpoint, how to compose a HTTP request. But now I'm going to reuse the same example and another one which is a little bit more simple later. So I first will show you a little slideshow. This is from one of the Swift books of data collection. This is the presentation they have in the teacher guide. After this short theoretical introduction, we're jumping into code to see how to implement this kind of decoding and modeling implementation in Swift. Okay, now let's have a look at JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's basically a text file, so it's human readable with specific formatting standards. It's mostly used to transmit data between a server and your application, but you can also use it, for example, if you have your own data that you want to save on the device, you can also map your data, your Swift data, to a JSON format and then use the file manager to save it to disk. It mainly consists of attribute value pairs, or if you use two dictionaries, key value pairs. For example, I have here the key name of this object, which is there in Astrada. And then there's another key, which is favorite movies. There are curly braces. One use is that they encapsulate one object. For example, we have here one object of person. It's probably a person because it has a name and some favorites. And inside of this favorite movies, we have an array of two objects. So the with these two curly braces for each of these two movies. The first movie is titled Finding Dory and the second movie is titled Inside Out. The um, square brackets are used for arrays of objects. And you have here this comma separating these two objects in this array. In case your keys or your values are strings, they're using quotation marks. So we have here the keys are usually strings and sometimes the value can also be a string for example the name or the title of the movies you can also have situations where you have numbers in this case they are not in quotation marks this is also true for boolean values so this would be then a value of true or false or a null which stands for an optional non-existing value so we have here in this curly braced one object with an array of two objects in there in order to fetch this kind of data from our cat API, we would use the URL session shared data task publisher for URL. And the URL has the information of the data that we want to actually get. Once the um, request is finished, we get here in this completion handler, the data response and error. And from the data, this is a data type. So it's a something because you might get a lot of different things back like our JSON or an image, a video, a sound file. So it's our job to find out what this data is, depending also for the URL, and decide how we want to map this and use this in Swift. One very useful tool is the JSON decoder, specifically for JSON files. There's also a JSON encoder, and this, this we would use in order to send our data from our client app to the server. We have some Swift structs, some Swift instances that we want to then encode as JSON and send to the server. But now, in this case, we are taking the data thingy and we're using our JSON decoder because we know it's JSON. First check if we have some data, then we use our JSON decoder to decode from our data blob into our Swift type. This example uses a dictionary of string values, string key and string values. The example I just showed you in the previous slide wouldn't work because one of these values was an integer. And then this wouldn't work. 
this you would be able to do if all of your keys are strings. But you already see, maybe sometimes things don't work. The data might not be in the format that you specify here. In Swift, when things go wrong, this is usually implemented as throwing an error. This decoding function is specified with a throwing indicator, which means that we need to somehow handle our the cases when, when it throws. And in order to do so, we can use the try. In this case, they use try question mark, which means that in case the function returns me an error, it throws me an error. I'm dealing, I'm using this like an optional value, saying that if I have a value, I'm returning, I'm getting back an optional of my type. In case it throws an error, I'm, I don't see the error. I'm just getting an optional value of nil back. That's why they also used here an if I can decode this type as my own report type, then I'm going to print this report. It's usually better to check what the error is because this decoding can be a little bit complicated, especially if your data types are more complicated. A simple example would be having here one object with just four properties. And now we want to map this from JSON to Swift. In this case, we have we have to decide what this object may be. So giving it a descriptive name of report. Swift In Swift, you use structs for data, for model types. And I also want to have the same four properties that you just saw in the JSON file. The first property would be name of type string. The second is creation date of type data, profile ID of type string, and reading account of optional integer. JSON usually has a different notation. They use a underbar, for example, report underbar date. In Swift, we shouldn't use underbar. The second word should start with a capital letter. For example, creation date, and then the D of date is a capital letter. So we need to also convert our keys for our decoding. We can use the coding keys and this has to conform to coding key. We have all the cases of our Swift properties. So this has to be the same name. For example, creation date is one of my properties. But the JSON key that I want to use is the value here, the string value of report under our date. All of the attributes that you want to change, use a different key between JSON and your Swift type need to have here this different value, but the name is the same, so I don't actually need to specify this. In order to use very easily this JSON decoder or encoder, we have to make our structs conform to decodable. This is a protocol. There's two protocols, decodable and encodable. And if you want to use both of them, which is very likely, maybe you want to receive this data, this reports from your server, and maybe you want to update or create new reports so you would also send it back. You would want to both use decodable and encodable. And in order to use both of them, we use codable. This, this is the encapsulation of these two um, protocols. So now we have here a um, Swift struct. And if you want to then decode, the returned data blob from our server. The change from the previous example is that I'm telling my JSON decoder the decode the type to report self from this data. So I use this mapping strategy or use the Swift. I want to get back this Swift type here. The report is then this report type and I can print this. This is a little bit of theoretical background. The first example that I'm using is, is the JSON placeholder API because the data is fairly simple. So let's just have a look at how the JSON file would look like if we fetch something from this API. For example, the post resources. So this is fetching an array of posts. If I tap on this, it's opening this URL in my browser and I can see the JSON file. So I have here an array of objects indicated by the square brackets. So my first object, my first user that I get back has a user ID of one, has a title and a body. Then my second indicating with the ID of two, my third indicating with the ID of three. So we could use these just to test it. And I need to use the URL here. I have here the playground that I already used before, but it's a new playground page. So first I have to have a URL from URL string. And I'm using here this URL, so it's HTTPS, JSON placeholder type code. 
So this is the base URL and this is the subdomain with this folder or this endpoint. So I'm fetching here posts. If I wanted to fetch something else like the users, the endpoint here would be users. Then I would create a task for my URL session dot shared dot data task with completion handler. This is URL. This is returning me a data optional, a response optional and an error optional. In order to start this task, I need to tell the task to resume. The URL, if I use the URL from string, this is an optional URL because maybe the format doesn't work. So I'm just for the playground of course unwrapping this. Later when you use it in the application, we will use a different strategy. So now I have here my data and I want to check if I can decode this. So let data is data because this is an optional. And first I'm going to just print the text format. Let string and I'm using the string with the initializer from data and encoding UTF-8. So if I can create this, I'm going to print here this string. If this works, you see all of this JSON file. In case you only want to see one of them um, for this specific API, you need to have a look. For example, here it says under roads, if you only want to have one, if you want to get the post with the ID one, we have to use it like slash one. Next slide one. So I'm changing my URL. And now the return type is just this one object of the post with the ID one. Let's try to figure out how to create a Swift type for this. So I'm having here my posts endpoint as so returning some posts. So the struct that I'm creating is I should have the name post. And I'm going to use here the same properties, user ID, ID and title. Let user ID, and this is an int. Let ID, this is another int. Just going to copy this and paste it here in my playground. So you can simply copy here the strings for the attributes because they need to be exactly spelled the right way for no. This one doesn't have the quotation marks, so it's an integer. The title here, the return value has this quotation mark, so we should treat it as a string. Let title string and let body string. In order to use this custom type now with my JSON decoder, I have to make this codable. This basically adds some functionality to easy map it back and forward to JSON and back or to some other types. In order to make this work, the attributes that, I, that you're using here also need to be codable. And per default, integer is codable and string is codable. I can also check this in the documentation for decodable. So I'm searching your decodable Swift standard library. And down here, it gives me the list of the conforming types. So what could I, what is already codable? For example, a bool is codable. Um, CG rect is codable, although you probably shouldn't use this with JSON. Um, just need to check where string is. URLs, IDs and strings. In order to work with JSON, I need to make sure that I use types that are codable and are working with JSON. And so now that I have here my custom type, I don't want to get this string value because I don't want to work with strings. I want to have my Swift type. So this is my um, post. So I'm creating here a decoder, JSON decoder instance. And I tell my decoder to decode to my type. So it has to be some need to specify the type, which is post.self from my data. And now we can print here this post. So it's complaining because it's not an optional. The failure here is a bit misleading because what actually happens is this, that this decoding function can throw. So I have to use here try and I'm saying I want to get this, handle this errors with an optional. Now this if statement says if I have a data thing and if I can map or decode my data thing to my post type, then I can enter this if statement and print this post. And so on here you see this post with this ID and title body. You can also, if you don't want to see the whole 
post here now use this because it's a struct say I want to only have the title and now it's only the title so this works if you have only one post that we returned but if I here change my URL just going to comment this out just going to leave the older version in and say I want to have posts the return is not just one post type it's an array of posts and um, you don't see anything because it doesn't work here with this try I'm basically ignoring the failure of my decoding so it's usually better especially if you're just starting to create this decoding stru this struct to instead of you try question mark use a do catch block so do catch which means that I'm catching the error that is thrown just going to take all this part out and move it into my do part without the question mark so what it says is now do try to decode my post if this is working then I'm printing here the title if not I'm catching the error and in here you have access to the error and I'm just going to print the error so now we see our nice little error telling me the debug description expected to decode dictionary int but found an array instead so the system saw this square brackets and understood oh it's actually an array uh -huh. and, and if you want to have an array of your type we have to change the type that we want to map to and an array is this square brackets so I'm just saying the type is now an array of posts and then the return value is not a post by itself but it's multiple posts so for example I can now print all my posts this is not going to be very nice <laughs> This is a very long print statement, but for example, we can print here the count of the posts. Found posts. So I'm now just printing the number of posts that we are returning here. And it found 100 posts. Let's now look at the second example of fetching JSON. And in this case, we're fetching our cats or information about cats and specifically about different breeds. So here under the search by breeds, area um, they have a small example the UI for example I can have here a drop down menu and seeing all the breeds if I tap on one it gives me more information about this breed so the first thing I probably should do is get these breed, the list of all these breeds this is under the endpoint breeds list of cat breeds so if I scroll down if I scroll down I can send a test request with this URL so this is definitely what I want to use send and down here under the body tab I get I can see the JSON file that we would return this would return me again an array of breeds and this is one object so these are quite large um, because there's lots of properties in there for example the name of this breed the lifespan again you see here this underbar that I don't really want there's numbers in there country codes the description so first we should try to fetch this JSON. You can also look under code generation and change this here to Swift. And then I can just take the URL. Actually the query, I should change the query because this is already showing some examples. So attach breed. I'm just going to delete this because I want to have all of them. And the URL for getting all of them is HTTPS API, the cat API dot com v1 breed so i'm copying this and in my playground i have created a new page so this is an url that you just saw again i'm force unwrapping this here it's the same game url session dot shared dot data task with url completion handler data response and error and then I need to tell the task to resume to start. Now we can have a look if we can have a data. If let data data let string string from data. So it has to be string data data encoding UTF-8. Printing here the string. So this is a huge text now. Similar to the strategy we use for the post, I just want to get one breed type back. Um, so for example, under queries, we can say here limit 
one. So this query parameters um, in the URL, you can see from the question mark limit one. So I'm getting only one back. You could also specify want to have the breed with the ID, but these IDs are a little bit different than the, the ones you saw before. So if I go up under response, under the example tab, here the ID has a string value of four characters. So we could also say I want to have the ID with this. Okay, for now I'm just going to use here, and in this case it really it brings me back an array of this one breed. And in the documentation you usually also have the information of the schema, so what are the properties that are in there. There's an ID with a string, a name, a string, temper temperament, string, lifespan, URL, some integers like experimental or hairless. This is actually probably better as a boolean value. Um, the attributes of which can be between 1 and 5 in this case, for example, adaptability or child friendly. So we can just use a couple of them and create our own breed struct now. So this is a struct breed codable. Because I want to use this with. So now I want to have the ID. This is a string. I'm going to copy this here um, and paste it up here. You don't need to do this, it's just for me um, because I, it, I don't have so much space on my screen. So we have here wait, this is a little bit more complicated. The name of this cat would be nice. Name string. Maybe I want to then we have the some URLs at specific cat or beat websites. We can use the temperament. Let string origin country code description. Okay, maybe we start now with these four attributes. So I said I don't want to have here my string type back. I want to have decode this as a JSON file. Decoder is a JSON decoder. And actually I want to use this do catch block again. Do let breeds decoder dot decode. Again, because I saw this is an array of breeds dot self from data. So try to decode. If this is true, then print this breeds. And then if this is not working, catch the error and print the error information. Now you see here my type breeds with this attributes, with this properties. The um, printed version is not so nice. This is because we didn't specify it uses the standard description return value. If you want to have a different description, you can make your struct type conform to custom string convertible and define here computed property var description. This is a string returning in string value saying breed with name and ID and printing here this ID. So now it, every time here for all of this print statements it's using this, it's calling this description computed property and prints the value that I specify here, which is breed with name, abusian and ID abuse. Okay, now let's go further and see what else we want to use. For example, I want to have similar to the test app the description of this cat breed and this is under the key description which you already see here uh, description description this is not good i probably you cannot even if the key is description and i don't specify this here you cannot use description as the property in here so we kind of need to map the um, value it's supposed to read from the json file to the one that is using for our string models and for now i'm just say calling this breed explanation this is a string. Okay, now let's see what happens. What nice error it's giving me here. In this case, it says key not found. Breed explanation doesn't exist. It could not find it in the JSON file. So no value associated with key, coding keys, string value, breed explanation. So here it already tells me the coding keys it's using um, are just the ones that I specified here as the attributes, the properties. 
So we need to change this override the coding keys it's using. So this is an enum coding keys with the associated value of string conforming to coding key. So we have a case of ID, a case of name, a case of temperament, and a case of beat. I actually can just copy the same names here. So the cases that I'm using here need to map the properties of my um, Swift struct, but the values it uses from the JSON, I can specify as, a, as the associated value here. For example, for my breed explanation, it's supposed to look in the JSON file for description. And now if I try again, it works because it knows in the JSON file, it's supposed to look for this key. And in order to add this or use this for my Swift struct, it's supposed to use this key or this property name. Another example where you would want to use your own coding keys is here, this underbars. For example, we had energy level with an underbar. So this does not look like a Swift standard. So let energy level. So it's together and so there's no underbar and the second word starts with a capital L. And this should be an integer. So again, I have to have this now here for my energy level and the value in the JSON should be energy underbar level as well. So now this works. I can obviously add this to my description that is printed. Energy. And now you see we also can now further use this property in our app. This is a type that has quite a lot of properties. So basically what you would do is depending on the use in your application, you would just take the properties that you want and the other ones you're just ignoring. You could just add all of these other properties if you wanted to. Then there's one more case. For example, here are some of these properties that are just between zero and one, like experimental or hairless. And the basic idea is the zero and one looks pretty much like a Boolean value. And in Swift, you would probably want to map this to a uh, boolean saying is hairless is this cat breed hairless because this is also easier to read and use for your ui so if you would want to transform from integers to bools so the property i want to take is hairless so i'm just adding this here net hairless i want to use a bool and now i just need to add this here to my coding keys and i probably want to rename this hairless to something is hairless this is more swift typical because then you can say if it's true yes it is hairless or not okay now we have another noise decoding error which says type mismatch expected to code a bool but found a number instead so the standard way of yeah treating it as a bool we need to so what you want to now do is add a little bit of logic of saying, okay, if it's zero, then it's a two, and if it's one, then it's false. No, wait, it probably should be other way around. So where do I add this logic during the decoding stage? And for this, we need to add a custom initializer. So this is init from, from decoder, decoder, and this is a throwing function. This is the function with all the initializer that is then used here during our JSON decoding process when it tries to um, map this data. So now we need to do all of this decoding and looking for the right keys and using and mapping it to the right type ourselves. It's quite a bit more work, but I just want to show you because in this case it's, it's quite useful. Down here, my errors tell me, yeah, you, you didn't specify any of these properties in your initializer um, because all of these are not initialized anymore. Okay, let's get our values from the decoder. Try decoder container by key. And this is now telling it to use the keys that I have anyway specified here. So I'm telling it to use my coding keys. This has to be coding keys with an S in the end because it's not the protocol here, it's the enum type that I declared. So now we have to assign all of our properties. So I'm trying to get from my value to 
use my values and decode to, for example, string type self from the value name. And I'm assigning this to my name property from my breed. And I can do the same for the other properties. So the ID is also supposed to be a string, but the key is the key that I specified here for ID. Then temperament is also a string, but the key is temperament. The breed explanation is supposed to be the, the from string for key breed explanation. And now I have here energy left. This is try values decode and in this case it's an integer so in dot self type for energy level and now the last one is hairless so i would get here the hairless property if i try values the decode and int self from decoding key hairless is hairless actually is hairless and i can use now these integers to assign it to my is hairless. So if my hairless is one, so if this is true, if it's one, then my is hairless is true. And if it's zero, then it's false. So then it's not hairless. Then it has hair. <laughs> so now it works again. <clears throat> we can now add this to our description and say is hairless, is hairless, question mark if this is true then I yes I'm printing here yes and otherwise I'm printing here no okay maybe I should check if this is um, true I'm just googling shortly this cat type but I guess it should be fine okay this uh, seems to be um, having hair <laughs> if you have again a look at the full JSON there is some kind of nested types inside of this one object for example this breed has an image property and this image can have has a height an id a url and a width so we could for example use this image Just, i'm loading this image url in your tab and you see this image so that would be nice to have access to but how do we handle these types so i'm just going to copy this and, and add this here to my playground I'm just going to comment this out so we see this so this is an some image i'm creating another struct which is breed image this has a height which is an integer this has an id which is in string this has a url and the type is not url it's a string because of the quotation marks so this is a string and then it has a width this is an integer. So now I can use this here for one more, more of my properties saying let image. This is my of type breed image. Okay, now I have quite a lot of my custom types. I have to add this here to my case image. It uses the same key image. So the property image and image stays the same. So I don't need to specify here anything different for the coding keys. But again, I need to add it here to my um, decoding initializer. So image is try values. I only need to do this for this one value. Otherwise, you, it's not necessary. Decode my breed image dot self for the value image. And the error it gives me down here is breed image does not conform to decodable. The reason why I wanted to show you this is um, I said earlier that in order to use codable, all of your properties types need to conform to decodable. And so far I only used existing types from Swift, Booleans, integers and strings. But this breed image is my own custom type. And if I now make this breed image codable, every all of my the properties in here also have to be codable so sometimes you just need to make sure all of them conform to codable and again my coding decoding works so now we have also information about this one nested type um, the same you would do here there's another nested type here which is weight 
So one is the of one of them is Imperial and the other one is Metric. So I'm guessing you probably would want to read both of them and then just check on the device what the metric system is and then depending on the device or the user's setting language settings, you would show one of them. If you would want to redo the same UI as in the demo, I have here now the possibility to fetch all the breed types. This is what we just did. And then here, select one. I have currently have only one new image URL. In this UI, I have multiple of them. Wait, uh, my loading is a little bit slow. So we need to check how could we fetch more URLs where we can get the images. And in this case, we have to go here under the image tab. Here saying image search. Um, so I could add here a query. Here there's one for category ID. So this is the other thing you could you could fetch cat images for cats in boxes or with hats. But I don't want to have these. I want to have here the breed ID. Um, for example, just to check, this is here a bus for this cat breed. Just copying this into um, here. How many images do I want to get back? Per default, this would give me one image URL back. But for this kind of grid API, maybe I want to have nine. So under code generation, you see the query composition with this endpoint. Just going to copy this URL. And I'm creating here a new playground page. Cat images for breeds. So starting again with the URL. URL from string. I'm pasting this URL. And force unwrapping this. So usually I would exchange this depending on what cat breed is selected. So let selected cat breed ID is in this case a bus. And then in this URL composition, I would add this as the ID. So again, we create a task URL session dot shared dot data task of URL data response and error and then task dot resume. So can just use the um, documentation test to fetch one of these. So one of these return types is this whole type. So it has a breeds property. This is the property that says to which breed does this cat belong, the cat images, but down here, this is the one that I actually care about is the height, ID, URL and width. Um, so this is basically the same as I used here. I'm just going to copy this and we'll see if I can still use this. So let decoder is a JSON decoder. If, let, if I have a data, I will try to decode this, let images, try decoder decode from my breed image. This is an array self from my data. If I'm successful, I'm pr printing here success fetched images dot count images, image URLs. And if this is not successful, just going to catch the error and print the error here. And you see, I have here my nine images. The reason why they have here this breeds properties is probably if you want to just have a random image. So if I, for example, wouldn't have, this is a lot, um, <laughs> here in my query, if I wouldn't have specified the cat ID, the breed ID, and just said, fetch me nine random images. And then you show these images and maybe you then want to show which breed this belongs to and then fetch more of these images for this breed. So it might be interesting to also sometimes to keep this. So we would need to here have another property, which is breeds. So I wouldn't re use here this breed image. So my breed, this breed image would then have here breed and this is of type breed which I had in the other file. So then I would use this whole stuff. Just going to take a part of it. And actually this is an array. I think it's breed. It depends on how you want to structure this. You can have also di two different structs here. One that has only the image inside or the, in this case, the breed with images. <laughs> this was quite a long tutorial. 
I want to show you a little bit more complex examples, not just this simple, um, I have here breeds and I just one to one map, the same names that I have in the JSON piece and I have my for my struct, but also renaming, how would I rename this, when would I rename this, what do I do if, if I have this nested structs or nest some more nested information in this objects, how do I use this with JSON decoder, decodable protocol, what types are conforming, and also here this custom initializer from dec decoding in case you want to do a little bit more complex mapping. For example, we want to do instead of using integers for if the cat is hairless to more swifty thing like boolean values. Mostly you might not need to do this, this kind of more advanced mapping and taking the information that you want is usually more the case if you were using a public API because they try to provide as much different information as you might want to. It really depends on what app you're making. For example, this cat API, one of the more popular apps that use this API was a Christmas calendar app. So they're basically fetching cat images from the server for each day and you see a new funny cat image for each of your Christmas days. And in this case, you really don't need so much. It's just a random image. So you probably really don't need all these breed categories. In contrast, where you have a um, personality test, maybe the app is supposed to help you find the right breed for you, for your lifestyle. Like if you are a developer, you probably don't want to have a very active and chatty cat. Um, so then you would just you would do a little assessment test of yeah, how much are you around because if you're having a cat that is very social you need to be around quite a lot maybe there is more people coming and going then the cat should be more stranger friendly you don't want to have a chatty cat so the vocalization should be low maybe you also have a dog that you want to have just have a cat companion for your cat then it should be a dog friendly cat um, in case you want to know what my cats are so my cats usually are on the other side sleeping oh, this is what louis does most of the time when i'm working so this is a greek cat and it seems to be i'm just showing you it as an example so mine are pretty intelligent the energy level is not so high dog friendly means they're they're not cats that run away from dogs they're fighting back and it's sometimes intimidating dogs they don't have any health issues because they're street cat breed. So in this case, if you want to tell people what cat you to get, or for example, a dog that fits your lifestyle, then the app would look quite different and your the data that you want to use in your app would look quite differently. Or as they had, here's the example. I think that was in the cat API here, a Tinder-like app. In this case, you would use the uh, example where you fetch a random cat image and then say, like it or not. And then when the user presses, just fetch another image. So then you would not need to know anything about the breeds. You just use the image endpoint. Or if you want to have a sharing app, you would use the uploading of this cat images there. In case you're using a public REST API, you just have to go through the documentation, what data there is, and if it fits the app idea, the functionality that you want to provide. In the next part, since we put so much effort into fetching our cute little cats, and we are going to make a little cat app in the next part of this tutorial. If you like this video, give it... <laughs> if you like cats, give this video a like. And let me know if you are also a developer who has cats and what your cats are doing when you are programming. Until next time, happy coding!